Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels. I'm a Jewish wife and mother living in Israel. I have three kids, ages seven, five, and almost two. A few months ago, we had a few sessions with an Israeli super nanny who learned with the Israeli super nanny Michal Daliot. She learned at her school. And we had a few sessions with her. Basically, I saw a what's up that uh, someone who just studied two years at Michal Daliot at this school for parenting is looking for two families to have discounted six or so sessions with the family. And we were going through a little bit of a rough phase uh, with our kids. You know how there's different phases and our two older kids were fighting a lot and we just felt like we have nothing to lose and we went for it. So in this video, I wanted to share a little bit about our experience and lessons that we learned. Maybe it could help someone out there as well. When it comes to parenting advice, sometimes I feel like, you know, time just passes, kids grow up. And at the end of the day, if you're a good person and you have good values, your kids will also have, or if you have a good sense of humor, so will your kids. But I'm also a believer in self-help. I've always loved self-help and I believe that people can change their behavior. And sometimes one small change or one comment or one piece of advice can help you in the here and now. Um, but I also do believe that sometimes just letting the time pass, letting the kid grow up, letting this phase pass, that also works. So this woman was great. She herself raised four kids. She has four young adults at home and she came for six sessions. The second session she came to watch us in our evening routine, which was a little bit embarrassing, but I think also useful because she really got to see what we were doing and to see us in action. It's nice to be able to talk to someone about how we felt and things that my husband and I were going through. Also, what was really nice is to have someone, not us, just think of small creative solutions about how to fix certain issues. You're in it, you feel like, at least I felt like, there's no solution around this, there's no fixing this, and sometimes just trying different things and hearing her out and hearing her solutions uh, and trying them out, you know, makes you think like, sometimes things do have a small fix or, something that you can try and talking to someone and hearing her out about how to fix these things makes you feel like there's hope, there's ways, to, there's things to try. If you feel like you're going through some tough times with parenting, maybe consult with a parent guide or even just a friend, someone who works with kids or someone who knows how to deal with kids, just hearing possible solutions and trying them out uh, sometimes these things like you don't think of the solution, but there really is a simple thing that you can try that might work. The first thing that we learned from her was start with your values. And she wanted us, I think maybe the first session, to think of what values we want to instill in our kids, what's important for us to teach them or to have them be as young adults. So it was really nice to think about what values are important for me to instill in my kids, to hear my spouse say what values are important to him. I think the most important thing is to really live by these values yourself because I think that showing is the most important thing for the kids. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to raise human beings that have values, that do good, and it was nice to take a step and to think about what these values are that are so important for us to instill in them. So one of the things that we mentioned to her, of course, was that our kids were fighting. At that time, we were going through a phase where they were fighting a lot. And one of the things she said to us was, try not to be bothered too much by their fighting. Kids fight and it's normal and it's okay. Try not to get involved too much or overreact and especially not to be the judge. Like if they come to you, he said this, he said that. Don't try to get involved and understand who's at fault and who's not. They have their issues. Of course, if they're fighting each other and at each other and something dangerous can happen, of course, set them apart. Maybe initially try to avoid the situation. Like if you see that they're going in a room and they might fight over something, try to you know, quickly get the other kid to do something else. Like try to be creative in avoiding these fights in the beginning. But if you see that they're fighting, let them fight. Uh, that's part of being part of a family. 
Also, she said that if they come to you with some problem and they're fighting, so try to let them come up with a solution. Like, what can we do? Sometimes kids are very creative and they have solutions to what they can do. You don't always have to bring the solution yourself. If they can't come up with it, try to offer a few ideas so that in the future they can know how to solve things, maybe take turns, or maybe they could try to think of solutions themselves. Another thing she saw and she suggested to us was try to give each kid their own space, their own living space. We live in a pretty small apartment. We have 80 meters. I think as kids grow up, they need more individual space. So, you know, we're always together. We're always in the same living space. So try to create these places where she can color and he could do his homework. And she saw that we were very tied in. One of the things we did was that we got bunk beds and I think having each kid having their own like space, even for sleep and before they go to sleep uh, was helpful. We're still trying to find ways to, you know, creatively create spots and places where they can play and color and do their work. Um, it's a little bit challenging in our apartment, but it was something that we're thinking about how we can do this. The next one is a little bit related, which is learn to be in the being. Sometimes, um, you know, kids and even adults were focused on being in the doing, on doing things and taking part of an activity. And she saw that we were kind of entertaining them and kids have this where they have to learn to play by themselves. Some kids are naturally just better at it. They can play by themselves for hours and some kids need to be trained and it's an important skill that they have to learn and they could master it more and more. And she said one of the things she says that, okay, now we're all gonna play by ourselves. We're gonna read by ourselves. And then in 20 minutes, I'll read to you a story or something like that because that way first we play by ourselves and then we get you know the reward, which is some sort of activity with me. She saw that we were entertaining them and playing with them, which is great, but they also have to learn to be by themselves, play by themselves. And this actually got a lot better because our oldest son is in second grade now. So he uh, started really loving reading books. And we had a feeling that once he started reading books, this would really help us and he would be able to be by himself more. When it comes to chores, she said she sees that our kids can do more. Their ages, you kind of don't notice when your kids are getting older and they could do more around the house. But she said, yeah, they can clear their dishes, they can do the dishes, they can help make the food. Um, all these things that, you know, as they get older, they can help out with poor. And also she said once they're able to master something by themselves, you know, sometimes they want you to do it for them. I personally think on occasion it's okay to do it for them, but also if it's something that they can already do by themselves, she said that, say to them, you're already big, I know you know how to do this by yourself, do it by yourself. What we do is that they each have these small chores that they do on a weekly or twice a week basis and they really like it. And I hope that it stays to be, right now, right now they each have, right now they each have um, a chore or two that they do on a weekly basis. And they really enjoy that. They like the responsibility, it's good for them. And we're also learning to let them do more and to do the dishes, it's something that we're still working on. The next thing she said was try talking to them and also at the right time. She said, if you see something that bothers you, don't make a scene, say, we don't do that, it's something that we don't do, and move on to your next, don't make a fuss about it, just move on to your next uh, task in short, and then later mention it and discuss it. When you have some alone time, doing the dishes or in the bath time, you could bring it up and you say, I know you're mature enough, I didn't like what you did, you can discuss it when things are calmer for you and for him. And speaking of quality one-on-one -on -one time with them, you know, we both have full-time jobs and we're very focused on picking up and bringing to school and feeding. And she saw that we were a little bit rigid. Our parents are wonderful, but they don't live close by. So we don't have any grandparents coming on a regular basis and basically we're doing all the pickups and the feeding and we we're not really flexible in that 
maybe I'll pick him up early and I'll take him out for a one-on-one -on -one activity. And even if our parents do come for a visit, then we try to like utilize them and maybe we'll work an extra hour or two at work. And she said to us, you can try to create those windows of quality time. Maybe if your grandparents come, instead of you know saying, okay, they'll pick up all three kids, maybe the grandparents could pick up one kid and have special time with them. And she tried to tell us, like, be a little bit more creative about how you find one-on-one -on -one quality time. And this is something that we also implemented at home even. Something that we say, okay, now it's Ema time, mommy time, uh, English time, because we teach them English uh, to read and write English. One parent will go into a separate room with one of the kids and it's something that they really enjoy. And also, we tr we're trying to be a little bit more flexible with the quality time. Uh, maybe yes, to take them out a day of school, they can miss school and we'll go on some special activities. So we're still trying to think of ways how to create quality time with us, with grandparents. The last one has to do with our parenting dynamics. Every parenting dynamics, of course, is different. And in our family, my husband is the more assertive, disciplinarian towards the kids and I'm more of a softy. And it's kind of hard for me to assert myself and to tell them, you know, what to do. Also, less things are important to me. So I don't put an emphasis on that because it means less to me. And he has more rules. It's, it's important for kids to see different parenting styles that complete each other. But we had some issues around this. A lot of times the kids would ask me something and I would say, ask him, ask, ask Abba, ask. Uh, my husband because I knew that that was something that was important to him and I preferred to my husband said and she agreed that parents should show a unified uh, parenting front and if they're asking something say okay we're going to discuss together and if it's something that we decide that's important for both of us it's important that they know that we're both going to agree or not agree to whatever they're requesting it, it was convenient for me that he was the one that was taking this disciplinarian and the tough decisions. And to him, she said that if I assert myself more and I make more decisions instead of sending the kids always to their father, then I might make some mistakes, like some decisions I'll make that he won't approve of. So that was something that he also had to realize that like, it's okay if I have different opinions and sometimes I'll make wrong decisions. Um, we're both equal and we're both making decisions. On one hand, it's good that the kids have different parenting styles, but try in front of the kids to have a unified front and to make a lot of the decisions together. And to me, she said, you know, it's okay that you're the fun mom and that you're not so rigid and have a lot of opinions, but try to, yes, assert yourself and yes, to have certain things that you value and that mean a lot to you that you insist with them. It's important to not you know, just let them do everything all the time. Try to realize that something is important to you, realize that you wanna insist on something and then follow through and insist on it. It's important that they see that. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope that it helped someone out there. I'd love to hear comments about parenting, how you feel about parenting advice and tips. Is it something that you're interested in? I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, see you next time. Thank you.